Okay, part five. Um, this one really is the beginnings of creating kind of a breakout style game. This allows you to create a, a movie clip, like a ball, which is uh, bouncing around and when it hits the side of, this, of the actual scene it will then bounce back rather than coming across onto the other side. The most important thing that you'll be learning uh, in this session is variables. So let's go to part five again. I've removed some of the code and altered the color just so you can see a difference. I've taken away some of the code because at the moment I want to concentrate on the X position and we'll put the, uh, the other code back in, in the Y in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a variable. Now a variable is basically a container and this object contains a value but the nice thing about it being a variable is we're not stuck to a value of say 10 it can vary, we can change that variable through using ActionScript. Now you can use anything call a variable anything as long as it's not ActionScript. I know that there's nothing in ActionScript uh, dictionary called xSpeed so I'm going to do that and I'm going to equal, make x speed equal 10. Now, that's just the starting value. It could actually be 1, 5, minus values, whatever you want. It could even be a random number. And we'll look at random numbers later. Now, instead of putting in a value down here for to equal 10, we will now make it equal x speed. Now, all that means is that circle MCX, it, it will be better, greater than and equal to, sorry, plus and equal to x speed, which is 10. Now we can change that down here now. So instead of the circle position jumping back to zero, we can have it go in a minus value. So what we're going to do is that if the x position of circle MC is greater than 555, what we will do, instead of changing the circle x's position, we will change the value of the movement. So what I will do is I'm typing x speed equals minus 10. So as soon as it becomes all the way over here, the value changes to minus 10, and a minus value makes the object go towards the left. Check that for code, and test it. As it goes towards the end, it will then come back the other way. Now you'll notice it goes slightly off it's gone for good because we haven't put the code in. You'll notice when I first started up, the ball goes halfway off. Well, now we need to calculate if we want this to happen exactly on the end. Because uh, it goes from the center position, the width of the ball, which I'll work out later on. Now we also want this to rechange it back the other way. So I copy this in, paste it down, and then I'm going to say that if it's X position, is less than or equal to, and we'll put in minus 5 for now, x speed will equal 10. So if the x position is off the stage, put it back to 10 and it will go the other way. So off we go, bounce, x speed position is minus 10, so it's going this way, it goes to here, and then it's plus 10. So we've got the beginnings of a bouncing ball. So now, what we can do is we can set up a Y speed and we'll equal 10 that as well. We'll just put in a semicolon because that ends the line. We can copy all of this and then we just got to go in and change all of the Y's, the X's to Y's. Copy this, paste that in, and the y will equal y speed. Now we've just got to change some of these values. The stage height is actually 400, so for now we'll do 405, and that should be fine. So I've changed all of those, and we should now have a bouncing ball. Check the code, it seems to be okay. Test the movie. And in the next part, I'll actually make this bounce exactly from the edge.